Okay, so the problem is face tracking is really expensive. Yep. All right, so what can we do about that? Well, you, you could a get solution. a faster computer. <laughs> get a really fast computer. You could have one computer doing the face tracking and sending the data to another computer that's doing other stuff, whatever your installation or whatever you need it to do. Um, but there's a simple solution. Well, I don't know how simple it is, but there's another kind of tracking called optical tracking. Uh, it's in that same collection of objects, the CPJIT library. So we're going to grab frames here and send it into this sub patch I made called optical tracking. And here um, we have to go RGB to Luma, but the, here's the object, cvjit.track. Let's get help on it and show you. So uh, it does optical flow based tracking. So you tell it, you, the thing with optical tracking is you have to tell it where to start tracking from. So you actually have to click on the image and then once it knows where to track, it's gonna try to stick to that image, to mm -hmm. that part of the image. So it's gonna analyze the, the few pixels around wherever you've clicked to find the pattern, the visual pattern of where it's supposed to track, and then it's gonna to try to stay on that item wherever it is. It's far less computationally intensive. Um, but the problem with, with tracking is it can get lost. So let me just show you how this works. I'll open this camera, and I'm just gonna click on my nose. There we go. So I told it, so the XY coordinates of where, where I click come out of this uh, P window. They're gonna go up here and gonna get, get parsed by this mouse clicker thing. So it just routes the mouse information, unpacks it. And then that's gonna go into the optical tracker. And the optical tracker is going to start tracking wherever it is that I clicked. Um, and you'll see what happens. So it's, I'm just drawing a little circle around it. It's doing a very nice job of tracking. And it's computationally really cheap because it only looks around where, wherever it already is. It's just gonna look at, you can tell it the window size. So here I have a radius of five. So it's going to look five, at a five pixel radius around wherever the current tracked point is. And it's tracking me very well. Mm -hmm. But here's the problem. So why not just use this instead of face tracking? Well, two things. One, I had to click Can on... Can I do it? Can I do it? Oh, I had to click on my nose. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, so you don't want your users to have to click on something. Um, and then here, okay, you can do it. This is weird. I do. Okay. It's very weird. It's on my finger now. Oh, now it's on your finger. Oh. <laughs> so it can get lost. You can sort of push it out of the way. Now it's <laughs> way, up. way up here. Hold on. Let's get it. So now it's gone. So it's gone. It's completely lost. It doesn't know. So you'd have to click again to retrack it. So um, maybe this gives you a hint as where we're going. We're going to combine optical tracking with face tracking. So we can use face tracking only once in a while. Mm -hmm. Because it's so expensive, we'll just do it like once per second or something. Instead of 24 frames a second or 30 frames a second for face tracking, we'll just do face tracking at one frame per second and then take the wherever the XY coordinates of where it found the face and send that straight to the optical tracker. Mm -hmm. So we'll combine optical tracking and face tracking. Optical tracking will give us the speed. Face tracking will give us the robustness of being able to find a face automatically without having to click on it. Sound good? I can dig it. But this is actually kind of fun. Oh. The face tracking track me, track works me. really well. Oh, I moved. Oh, I'll track Scout your nose. Hold like... on a minute. There we go. You took it? <laughs> took it. Okay. Let's move on. That's only three minutes? Yeah. Wow. You're getting fast.